If you're sending a 1080p HD video stream, we've seen that you'll need to transmit something like 60 million pixel frames per second. A reasonable question to ask is, so how many bits per second is that? And the answer isn't unequivocal. It depends. It comes down to a simple equation. The number of bits per second on the serial bitstream is equal to the number of pixel frames per second multiplied by the number of bits per pixel frame. It's easy. Let's take each of those factors in turn, starting with the number of bits per pixel. Okay then, how many bits per pixel? Well, it depends. It depends on whether the pixels are represented as RGB pixels or whether they're represented in some other color space, on whether there's audio coming along for the ride, and, and how is synchronization handled, auxiliary channels, what about the control channel, error handling. You can see that well, before long, the possibilities just boggle the mind. Okay, so what about the other factor, the number of pixel frames per second? Well, like I said before, it depends. How many video frames are being transmitted per second? I mean, film starts with 24. A PAL encoded video is 25. NTSC encoded video is 30. Or if you're using progressive encoding, it might be... 50 or 60. Hey, some high-speed video systems have even higher video frame rates. And what about the picture dimensions? 1080p is common enough today with picture dimensions of 1080 rows and 1920 pixels per row. But there are higher, 4K and 8K come to mind, and lower, down to old VGA resolution of 640 by 480. And although aspect ratios of 16 by 9 are common, they're by no means exclusive. You might see old standard definition 4x3 dimensions, or even wider dimensions than HD. The bottom line is this. You can see pixel frame rates from under 10 MHz to north of 1 GHz. And combine that with the variability of the number of bits per pixel, and you can see serial bit rates that could vary wildly. But here's the thing. We can't just choose any pixel frame size and rate that we like because the serial bit rate of any particular serializer is actually constrained to a fairly narrow range. And here's why. Depending on the part, the serial bit rate can range from well under 1 GHz to well over 10 GHz. That maximum serial bit rate for the particular chosen part places a firm ceiling on how many bits you can push down the pipe in one second. But there's also a floor. Remember, the spectrum of a GMSL waveform runs from half the serial bit rate with peaks at submultiples of the serial bit rate down to about 1 20th of the bit rate. Get too low, and suddenly the cable stops acting like a transmission line at some of those frequencies. And don't forget, at about 1 MHz, there's the reverse control channel we have to think about. Sound complex? Well, it is. But the good news is that Maxim has done all the hard work for you, and in fact, Maxim doesn't even specify the range of serial bit clocks. Instead, what we do is we give you a whole set of levers and tell you the pixel frame size and the acceptable range of pixel clock frequencies for each setting. Follow the guidelines, and you can be certain that the resulting pixel clock will be right for your application. Let's explore some of those levers. Now, keep in mind, not all of these levers are available in any particular GMSL part. But the idea of GMSL is that for any serializer and deserializer, there will generally be a group of settings that they have in common so that they'll play together. All right, with that said, let's get started. The first lever is the word size. GMSL devices call this bandwidth select, or BWS. Now, regardless of how many pins there are on the device, one way or another, the inputs get mapped into the parallel input register in some fashion. And generally, that parallel input register will be 24 bits wide or 32 bits wide. Those bus sizes map really nicely to the 8B10B encoded result. 24 bits into the encoder, 
gives you 30 bits out and 32 bits into the encoder gives you 40 bits out. So the input word is instantly translated to its 8B, 10B equivalent, either 30 or 40 bits. Neat. Now, you don't actually get all 24 or 32 bits. For one thing, there's a parity check bit that covers the rest of the word, so that knocks you right down to 23 or 31 bits. And there's a forward control channel bit, and maybe an audio bit, perhaps three bits for sync. But how the bits are allocated isn't really the point here. The point is that regardless of the word size, there's a speed limit on the serial line. The more bits you send per pixel word, then the slower the maximum speed of the pixel clock. The maximum pixel clock for a 32-bit pixel word size will frequently be about 75% of the maximum pixel clock for a 24-bit pixel word size. So is that a problem? Well, maybe or maybe not. Just check the data sheet for the pixel clock rates. But there might be a problem if you're generating too few pixel frames. Now, here's the thing. For any group of settings, the pixel clock has a fairly narrow range of operating frequencies. If the maximum pixel clock for a given group of settings is, let's say, 100 megahertz, then the minimum pixel clock for that setting is likely in the neighborhood of 16 megahertz. Okay, well, is, is that a problem? Well, think about it. Let's say you have a lower resolution camera, perhaps just VGA resolution, 640 by 480 pixels, and it's operating at 30 frames per second. That comes to just a little over 9 million pixel frames per second, and if you consult most of the GMSL serializer data sheets, that pixel clock is just too slow, even for 32-bit mode. Okay, so what's the solution? Well, many GMSL serializers have a low data rate mode. That's the second lever. In this mode, the serializer sends each pixel multiple times, most frequently twice. That gets the effective pixel clock rate up to where it needs to be, and lets the actual pixel clock creep along at whatever speed. This lever is called Data Rate Select, or DRS, and it's available in some, but not all, Maxim serializers. The third lever is the encoder. While 8B10B encoding is fine, 9B10B is more efficient and lets you send more bits using the same serial bit rate. In some Maxim serializers, you'll see this setting called High Bandwidth Mode, or HIBW. When high bandwidth mode is enabled, the same 30 serial bits that used to contain only 24 pixel bits can carry 27 bits using 9B, 10B encoding. You get an extra 3 bits and no penalty. But note that this encoding technique can't be used in all cases, so you have to check the data sheet. The fourth lever is data rate doubling, and this is a pretty specialized mode you'll find in some camera systems. To keep the pin count low, these cameras split the payload for each pixel into two chunks. If the total payload word is, let's say, 30 bits, then each piece is 15 bits. In the serializer, the two words are captured and concatenated. From that point on, the data is treated as a single word. Now, in this case, the serializer will append the forward control channel and the parity bits to create a 32-bit word that's passed on to the serializer logic. Now, this doesn't change the number of pixel frames generated by the serializer, but it does mean that the clock rate coming from the camera is twice as fast as the actual pixel rate. If you have a camera that requires double rate inputs, you need to be sure to check the serializer data sheet to be sure that the serializer does support this mode of operation, because not all of them do. Now, in the previous example, did you notice anything missing? Where was synchronization? Sync would have taken away three of your 30 payload bits, horizontal, vertical, and display enable. Well, in this example, it might not have made any difference, but if you're starved for bits, surely we can do something about wasting three bits in every pixel word, and you're right, we can. 
The solution is to reserve certain payload words to indicate when HS, VS, and DE change. This works because most video signals still have an inactive time at the end of each line and at the end of each frame. In the digital world, they don't really need an inactive time. As long as the signals are properly framed, one line could be sent immediately after the previous line, but because of the legacy of vertical and horizontal retrace, we can send those special packets, corrupt the visible video field not one bit, and avoid having to waste three bits in every pixel frame. Now there's one more thing to think about, one more lever. We've mentioned the packet parity check bit, and it's a good way to make sure the pixel packets arrive at the receiver without an error, but you know, one bit isn't very reassuring. I mean, what if there were two bits in error? Then the parity bit would appear to be correct, but you'd see a glitch in the video signal. Okay, what if, in addition to the parity check, we had an actual CRC? Well, in most of our serializers, you can enable a 6-bit CRC that checks the rest of the bits in the payload. Now, of course, it does take up 6 bits, but for the most critical applications, having a full CRC makes sense. And it makes even more sense to have error correction and some GMSL serializers and deserializers will compute a Hamming code across the payload bits. Hamming codes allow you to correct single-bit errors transparently and to detect all two-bit errors. So, we have a serial data stream with a fairly narrow range of operating frequencies, a set of potential video sources that have wildly varying pixel rates, and six levers to help manage it all. Let's put it all together, shall we? We'll start with an older part. If you use this part, you can select the data rate, double mode, and word size via the bandwidth select. You get those three levers and no more. But look at the pixel clock range. You can have a video source with a pixel clock ranging from a low of 6.25 megahertz up to a maximum pixel clock of 100 megahertz. Here's another example. In this part, you have four levers, double mode, bandwidth select, high bandwidth mode, and pixel CRC. Now, whether you enable or disable the pixel CRC doesn't really affect how fast you run the pixel clock. It just steals bits from the pixel word to improve error detection. But the remaining three levers do affect the pixel rate, as you can see here. This part runs faster than the previous part, up to a 116 megahertz pixel clock. But notice that the lowest pixel clock it supports is only 12.5 megahertz. Okay, here's a third example. This part is interesting in that it doesn't support 24-bit mode. Instead, if you're using a 30-bit serial word, you automatically use 9B, 10B encoding, so you get a 27-bit input word. That means you get kind of two and a half levers because the BWS and HIBW bits are somewhat combined. Still, you get a range of pixel clocks from 6.25 megahertz all the way up to 104 megahertz. Now, the last example supports pixel clocks from 6.25 MHz all the way up to 150 MHz. In this case, you get DRS, HIBW, and BWS, but not double mode. So, as you can see, Maxim offers a wide range of serializers that are capable of interfacing video sources at just about any pixel rate. Join us again next time for more about Maxim's GMSL serializers and deserializers.